okay? But you keep your head up, you keep digging, you keep fighting, you keep scratching, you keep crawling to get to the top. The bright lights of the Orange Bowl shine down upon what we expect to be another memorable evening, another classic perhaps. On November 6th, these two teams did battle, and for the 11th straight year, as mentioned, Miami Northwestern won that game. 23-13 was the final there. Miami Jackson trying to win now the rematch when it matters most and advance to Ben Hill Griffith Stadium, Florida Field, for next week's 6A championship final. Our referee with the white hat, John Foster, one of the best, escorting the captains for both teams at the center of the field. And can you imagine how fast those hearts are beating, how much adrenaline is pumping between these two teams filled with young men who know each other so very well. I think you said it best in the open. The schools are only 10 blocks. You're going to visit from each other. They know each other very well. Northwestern was able to win the first one. And now Jackson's going to line up and see if they can come back. The eagle is tail. I'll flip it, you call it in the air, I'll flip it again. Make one choice, is that clear? Call it. He called heads, what is it? Heads it is, you want to talk, you can receive, kick on the first. First, he's first. I want to first, it's like you want to defer in just a second. You can receive, okay, all you need to kick. You want to receive, which goal you want to defend. Generals of Jackson, who have elected to play defense first this evening and let Northwestern have the football to open this evening's action. And they're dressed in all blue. Here will come Billy Rolls, rampaging Bulls, the state champions, as recently as 1995. And they stand a perfect 13-0 on the year, won all 10 in regular season play and three thus far in postseason. Great job. This is the second year with this Northwestern staff. A year ago in the playoffs, they lost in the first round to Hylia American. It was a wild, high-scoring game, but they felt they needed that loss. And since that loss, the Bulls have not lost since. 13 straight wins, and they're two wins away from achieving their goal. Western fans cheering a victory over previously number one ranked plantation last week. Miami Northwestern ranked fourth in all the nation and now face a Miami Jackson team that down Dillard shut them out last week. 13 to nothing for head coach Joe Redman at the age of 53. That was his 23rd victory for Team Green. And Miami Jackson. 8-2 in the regular season, and now 11-2 on the year. The emotion is spilling over, overflowing, as was reported earlier today in the Miami Herald. There have been enough vendor tents crowding around the Orange Bowl this week and throughout the Liberty City neighborhood that is home to both of these schools selling pennants and T-shirts and souvenirs, hats of all kinds. Well, I'd like to say, you know, doing the gridiron report, the people down here love me. I pull in and one of the vendors recognized me. He goes, Sean, you have to have a Soul Bowl two-seat T-shirt. You just have to have one. You have to represent the people of Day County. A breeze gusting at upwards of 20 miles an hour blows north toward the closed end zone of the Orange Bowl. The crowd still caught in traffic, still headed this way on our short kickoff. We expect the lower bowl to be entirely filled tonight as Levy Brown takes a short opening kickoff and scoots out across the 35 up to the 38-yard line. And Northwestern will go on offense first, operating out of the pro side. Quarterback by number 12, a junior standing six feet tall, Allison Sheffield, who a week ago, as you look at his regular season numbers, almost matched his 10-game regular season total when he hurled three separate touchdown passes. That was a great game and a great test for Northwestern. Actually, that's a great test for this Jackson team. Plantation and Jackson both like to air it out, but Northwestern proved in that game they can score on the ground and through the air. 
shifting as you see prior to the snap Antonio Bryant this way and Howard Lewis very bottom of your picture on first down and a broken play at not a bootleg and the loss is all the way down to the 36 yard line Lewis Gaslin the defensive tackle there it's a loss of seven we need to point out right away this evening as you take a look at the offensive linemen, as well as the running backs, Torrey Cox does not start this game tonight. He is replaced by Rashad Smith in the backfield. Torrey Cox injured last week in the victory over Plantation. Rashad Smith came onto the field and was a star, rushing for better than 100 yards. Under pressure and in and out of the hands of his intended target near midfield, and Lamont Penny. And Sheffield feeling heat from the backside. Xavier Williams crashing on the blitz. X marks the spot. The pressure came from the junior, James Doomerville. And there you see the front four of Gashlin, Terulia, Oliver, and Doomerville. Maybe the best front four in not the Dade, not Dade County, the state of Florida. And there you see the secondary led by Xavier Williams. Now we see Torrey Cox now in the backfield. Miami Northwestern hoping not to use him this evening, if at all possible. And it takes but two snaps, and he's in on the third. Third and very long. Sharp drop, and down he goes! Sacked by Sidney, or rather Arthur Stewart! Paul, I wanted to say, at, at the coin toss, Jackson won, and they deferred. They wanted to go on defense, and I think in a big game like this, you want to play defense first, because defense is all about emotion. Arthur Stewart comes straight up the middle on the blitz. Northwestern had a pass. Jackson brought them all, and they get the sack. Levy Brown punts the ball, headed towards Stephon Logan. Logan allows it to roll past him inside the 30 and down to the 26-yard line. It's a punt with the wall that wasn't necessarily very well hit. But it's a net of 45 yards, and there is Torrey Cox. Offensively, King of the Hill or just King Hill tonight? Four quarters will tell you the senior who has thrown just six interceptions all year and close to 20 touchdowns, six feet tall, is King Hill. Very precise, very disciplined for head coach. Joe Redmond. On first down, they'll run the toss sweep. Stephon Logan with the penalty marker down. Loses the football and it's recovered by Northwestern. Sidney Simpson fell on the football, but there is a penalty marker down. Referee John Foster. To confer with the Northwestern captain, by the looks of things, merely a formality, they'll take the football. There you see tonight's officials, and they're from West Palm. Holding. Offense. Decline. First down. Jitters on both sides of the field to get us started. Let's see if we can take a peek at the holding, and there's a couple right there. You can see it. It's right there on number 98, Jarrell Weaver, and there's really not much to do, but great hit. Stephon Logan may be a little bit nervous up with the hit. Quentin Swain, great job at Northwestern in business, and that's one thing Joe Redmond said in the first game. We made turnovers. We can't do that in this game. First play, they turned the ball over. First break of the night, the quick hitch to the far side into the hands of uh, James Jones. He loses the ball going down. Another fumble. And who's at the bottom of the pile? It belongs to Jackson. And now a penalty marker throw. What a wild start tonight. It's Andre Oliver, big number 93, went to the bottom of that scrum to come away with the football. Cyril Jones had nowhere to go, and sometimes kids try to do too much. Just dive forward, get two yards. You're not going to score. They're going to pin you against the boundary. He tried to do too much. The ball got away from his body. They popped it loose, and now Jackson has the ball. And the call. After the change of possession, we have dead ball, unsportsmanlike, gold. And gold would be Miami Jackson. There will be.
be some talking as you get a good look at Oliver. See the adrenaline pumping through him. You mentioned, I'm sorry, Paul, but you did mention a little bit of talking. I thought a week ago the best quote after the Northwestern Plantation game, Northwestern, one of the Weaver boys, Jarrell, was quoted in the paper saying, you know, they came into our house talking all that trash. Well, whose season's in the trash now? In Dade County, it's a little bit different than the rest of the state. They talk a lot. They'll talk through the papers. It's very funny. It's almost as if this is a college or a professional game, the way they talk to each other through the media. On first down and 10 from the 11-yard line, two turnovers. One coming, first time Stephon Logan handled the football. He's off the left side and finds a gap at about eight yards. Out close to the 19-yard uh, line, Quentin Swain on his back. Now we're starting lineups this evening are presented by the new Don. Logan, Gibbs, Capers. Huggins, a wide receiver who caught a touchdown pass in the first go-around between these two teams, along with Cyril Jones. And over the football, number 56, Calvin Parks, all of five feet, six inches tall, but he tips the scales at better than 230 pounds. Seeing is believing. Logan again. Close to the first down marker. Stephon Logan, a 165-pound junior, going up against that Northwestern bullish defense. And double vision, Jermel and Jarrell. 6-3, better than 210, both 17 years young. Simpson, Brown, Gerald, and Ward in the secondary. It's third down, needing entry. A good spot, and now a penalty flag thrown in. There's some movement on the play. Northwestern saw that immediately, and they jumped right across the line to force the official to call it. Busy start for Mr. Foster. Step in fraction. Joe Redmond knew that poise at the outset of this game would be so important, and we're seeing both teams trying to get their sea legs under them tonight. Well, when you talk penalties, Jackson comes into this game, 69 penalties for 450 yards. When you take a look at Northwestern, they had 93 penalties on the year for 400 yards, so these teams are well used to having double-digit penalties in each and every ball game. Aaron Brown to the left side, Javaris Capers to the bottom of your screen, and out of the gun on third down. The lefty throws, and it's very nearly intercepted by Sidney Simpson. Simpson had both hands on the ball, and the cornerback could not hold on to it, and he knows it. Oh. College recruiters. Everyone talks about the state of Florida, but when college recruiters come to South Florida, they're looking for one thing. DBs, DBs, DBs. Sidney Simpson, the closing speed. It's very difficult to find. He made a great break on the ball. He just was unable to hang on. Carlos Martinez averages better than 35 yards per punt. He did not hit this one well. It bounds upfield at the 40. will be down at the 41-yard line and following just a 26-yard kick. Northwestern will benefit from starting for the second time and still the early first quarter on the Jackson side of the football field. A look at how these teams arrived in the semifinal game. American shutout. Southridge scored but 10 and last week against the number one team in the state plantation. 49 points out of this bull offense. It was an outstanding performance. Terry Cox stiff-arming, met in the backfield, looking to turn the corner, able to. Big collision upfield. Then Johnson, strong safety, number five, came up. And Cox, with that speed, able to, well, when it's all said and done, game five. Tory Cox is a very special ball player. At the end of the year, he's actually being considered for all gridiron status. There you see 12 rushes, 115 yards, and he did that in 16 minutes of play. On his second touchdown of the game, diving into the end zone, he caught a helmet on his ankle. He hasn't practiced all week. He was questionable before the game. But like any kid, I walked up to him before the game and said, you playing? He goes, oh, yeah. Terry Cox getting their shoulder pads adjusted. 180 pounds is Cox with about 4% body fat. Packed like a fist is Cox. He's 
set him up in the eye on second down. Cox again, hit, hit on, and dropped. Breshnar Torillo met him, the defensive tackle. Little of no gain on the play. We, we saw in the how they got here segment, Miami Southridge, they lost 28 to 10 to Northwestern. How did they do it? By filling the gaps. There you saw, they don't want Vernon Carey and the big, powerful Northwestern line to extend. So they're trying to fill every single gap, forcing them to reach block. Third down. Here comes the blitz. Stepping up Sheffield, ran into his own offensive lineman. And Clay Gallion. And down he went. Neither offense has been able to move the ball. And Gilliam, 65, appears shaken by the collision. Once again, Miami Jackson. Miami Southridge showed how to attack this defense. Fill every single gap. That's what they've done on two consecutive plays. They are going to say, Northwestern beat us throwing the football. Last week, Plantation tried to do some things, and actually, Northwestern did a pretty good job of beating him through the air. Right now, Sheffield has no time to throw the ball. A little quicker defense he's facing this week instead of the Plantation Colonel D. The junior and Allison Sheffield sends Cox in motion and wants to go deep down the sideline. The catch is made at the first down. Tony O'Brien, his top target on the year, hauls it in for a gain of 19. First completion of the night for Northwestern, Sheffield to Bryant. Let's take a peek. They keep Rashad Jones in the block, try to give Sheffield a little bit more protection. They run the wheel route. Bryant finds the opening in the secondary. Nice job by Sheffield, and they get the first down. So Sheffield and the Bulls loosening up now. You look at Brian's numbers. That tops this Northwestern team. On time at the line of scrimmage. The drop and sent back at the 29-yard line. He very nearly lost the handle on that. James Dumerville, the tackle number 95, came knife and through. Dumerville, 55 tackles, 22. Oh, I guess it's 23 for loss now. Super football player, and he's only a junior, probably the best defensive lineman they have, and that's not a knock because Lewis Gaslin's a heck of a football player himself. But look how he goes right through, beats Vernon Carey, the All-American candidate. We have an injured general fallen on the field. It appears to be Andre Oliver. You recall he recovered the fumble at the outset of this game. And while he's being attended to, we'll step aside. No score, but a lot's happened early in the Orange Bowl. This is brought to you in part by the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Marina, located conveniently on the intercoastal waterway. The boat parade in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow night. It's yeah, the holiday be, season. It won't be convenient around the intercoastal tomorrow night with the boat parade. Don't get caught on the east side of town tomorrow night. Hanukkah on Sunday, Christmas, just a few weeks away. In the midst of the holiday season, Burnett Godby throws, and it's broken up. A new quarterback in for Northwestern, Burnett Godby. With that toss intended for Antonio Bryant, who made the 19-yard reception a moment ago, unable to come up with it here. Godby's numbers so far on the year, and you can see that he's played a good deal this season. Sheffield is their starting quarterback, but Godby comes in because he has a little bit more success throwing the football. You see eight touchdown passes compared to Sheffield's four. But Sheffield's show he had a little something a week ago as he threw three TDs against Plantation. Red Godby, the senior, breaks him out of the huddle. Just a bit taller than uh, Sheffield. And now they adjust in the eye. Rashad Smith ahead of Torrey Cox. Of a tandem. Play action to Cox. I'd be looking to set up the screen and a sack for what is the fifth time in the first quarter alone. James Dumerville. Five sacks in the first quarter by Jackson. You can't find enough superlatives for James Dumerville, but watch Torrey Cox. See how he slips to the ground? That's where the ball was supposed to go. They can't. They're, they're having so many problems getting drops. What they try to do is they try to put Torrey Cox in here. Look, see how he slips? And now he has no one to throw to, and that sets up Dumerville. Uh, Gottby had nowhere to go with the ball. 34 yards in losses on five sacks. Forcing in part this pooch punt. And it will be down at the two-yard line. 
Good special teams. Hustling down. Antonio Bryant, 42 yards on the punt, but Coach Joe Redmond knows he's backed up to his own goal line. They wear the G on the side of those green helmets. They defeated Carroll City, fortunate to do so, winning by a touchdown. Their best offensive performance against crosstown rival Miami. And then Dillard last week when they scored both offensively and off a 65-yard interception return for a score by Corey Burns. Curry Burns, talk about a special player. But how about this? Two weeks ago, Northwestern played Southridge, but then in the next game, Jackson played Miami High. They played it as a doubleheader right here in the Orange Bowl. Talk about a special night Would that have for been high school oh, kids. Absolutely. Trying to get it out of harm's way. That handoff, John, was two yards into the end zone, and Logan is able to work it out of the very dangerous territory with handoffs that deep. There is Torrey Cox. He's yet to be unleashed tonight, and as Sean mentioned, he is not 100%, did not practice throughout the week. He had 118 yards a week ago, as I mentioned, but what's even more impressive about their running game is their fullback, Rashad Smith, who played fullback for a quarter and a half, came in to tailback after he was hurt and ran for over 100. Logan gets a block. Still unable to get past the five. Lee Brown. 165-pound senior who leads Miami Northwestern in tackles, and that is saying something in this defense. Number seven, met him in the hole. This is how you play defense. Levy Brown, number seven. He plays strong safety, but they also put him at linebacker. They want him to shadow Stephon Logan. And there, not only is he, is, is he his shadow, he's inside his shirt. All over him is Levy Brown. And suddenly, it is third down. The Generals need five out of the gun. With time and incomplete. Intended towards Sherwin Dean. There was no one around him upfield at the 15-yard line. Small and the pass was off target. Small miscommunication. Levy Brown, he turned and looked at number three, James Gerald, right after the play. Levy Brown's assignment tonight is to go wherever Stephon Logan is. That time, another receiver came out, and there was some confusion. It looked as if Gerald went with Logan as well, and that left a wide-open receiver. Unfortunately for Jackson, they were unable to complete the pass and take care of that break. Carlos Martinez tumbles another one at the 35-yard line, and it rolls toward the 40. This will be the third opportunity for Miami Northwestern to begin a drive on Jackson's side. Par, par, birdie. Par, eagle. Whoa. Par, par. Hmm. Able to defeat a team in Jackson when they have so much in common. 11 straight times, 16 of the last 17. Well, there was a span there in the early part of the decade where Jackson was not a very good football team. Enter Joe Redman. That's when everything turned around in the past couple of years. The bobble snap from center is picked up by Allenson Sheffield. So Redman has really helped resurrect the Jackson fortunes. Let's check in for the first time this evening with James. Guys, on the last defensive series for the Generals, big defensive tackle Andre Oliver went hopping out after he twisted his ankle. He taped it up and he's still hobbling around. He's sitting on the sidelines right now. They need him on defense to stop this Bulls offense. Already with a fumble recovery tonight, and as you can see by his uh, size, he covers a lot of real estate. He plugs a big hole for Coach Redmond. The next Andre Giant? Maybe. Out of the eye again. On third down. Play action. And on the roll, Sheffield on rolls. Diving, but incomplete at the 28-yard line. And the heat was coming to James Green, the linebacker. For Sheffield to unload it, perhaps before he wanted to. He didn't really have a lot on it. James Green is a very multi-dimensional linebacker. He's able to get after the quarterback, as you saw there, gets the quarterback pressure, but he's also able to cover running backs and some wide receivers downfield. He's very adept at going backwards as well as forwards. Stephon Logan standing at the 10-yard line to field this punt by Levy Brown. Brown kicking it away from him. And he'll pin 
this one inside the 15. Libby Brown with two outstanding punts nearly going. One mark dead at the two. This one away from trouble in Stephon Logan at the 13-yard line. Crowd continues to arrive in Miami's Orange Bowl. Man, that popcorn looks good. I wonder if she can run some up for me. Hey, yeah, bring some up. <laughs> At halftime, the Northwestern Bowl Marching Band, along with the Miami Jackson General Band, will both entertain the crowd here that many believe will exceed the all-time record for a high school sporting event in the Sunshine State. A record that has stood since 1965. Taken down immediately after the catch. Nice hustle special teams are rather on the tackle here by Levy Brown as he dropped Logan in his tracks. Let's take a good peek at the Weaver brothers. This is the key. They pitch their ends and they rush him upfield. This time he's going up against Maurice Smith, the junior. He gets around. They look at the collision in the backfield. That's one thing that these quarterbacks will face all night is serious pressure. Last week, Ryan Schneider of the Colonels was just tortured in the backfield, but he threw for over 300 yards, but yet he's one of the best quarterbacks in the state, 6A player of the year. How will King Hall face that pressure? Named yesterday the 6A player of the year, passing for more than 3,000 yards. Congratulations to him. Logan able to get to the first down marker. And a fresh set of downs, a first down. Out of bounds, up at the 16. Let's regress a moment. Ryan Schneider in Plantation finish 11-1 last week, falling to Northwestern. Look how they pitch the ends. Jarrell and Jermel, they come after him, so they have to get rid of the ball quickly. We said Levy Brown will shadow Stephon Logan everywhere on the field. He made the play on the previous play for the six-yard loss. That time he was able to get free and pick up the game. But I believe there's a flag on the play. A call is holding, and it's against Jackson. And that will erase the fine catch and run by King to Logan. And the ball now on second down will be marked at the four-yard line. I'll tell you what, deep in the closed end of the Orange Bowl against this rush, right now it's not good to be the King. Quick catch into the flat. Catch is made by Tavares Capers. Capers gets a block, and he's upfield to the 20-yard line. The junior in Capers, so quick for Jackson, their leading receiver on the year, and here's why. Every year, Sunshine Network names a junior of the year, and Tavares Capers, well, you have to put his name into the mix. He led Dade County in receiving. This time, just takes the hitch and runs upfield, uses his speed, solid football player, one of the top recruits next year when he becomes a senior. 58 receptions on the year, 972 yards and eight touchdowns. Great season for Tavares Capers. So the quarterback, too, in King Hall, that's his first pass completed for positive yardage. He netted 16. He's now connected on two in a row, and they'll keep it on the ground. Not much there up front for Logan. I will say this, though, for Miami Jackson, the Generals able twice to drive it off their own goal line, and maybe they can finally get the ball back across midfield. This is a positive drive, without a doubt, Paul. Second straight time they've had the ball starting possession inside the 10. They really needed just to get a first down, positive yards, and if they can get a good punt, try to establish some better field position because their defense is just playing an outstanding first quarter of football. Their punter has struggled with Carlos Martinez so far. This is best effort into the arms of Yale Keith Brown. Brown taken down at the 42-yard line. A 30-yard punt with four yards the other way by Yale Keith Brown on the return. And for the fourth time in the first quarter, Northwestern benefiting from excellent field position as they inherit the ball. Getting back to Yule Brown a little bit, he's only a junior, 5'8", 160, but he closed the door against Miami Central in a big district matchup this year with a 91-yard interception return for a touchdown. Gave Northwestern a 19-6 win. Only a junior and another prospect for next year. Cox to end the first quarter, maybe for a yard, and it's number one, Arthur Stewart, on the tackle that ends for it, number one. Bam! of all ages here in Miami joining you on our Dodge Champion Series on Sunshine.
enjoyment of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this production without the express written consent of the Florida High School Activities Association is prohibited. With Sean Alishire and James Bates, I'm Paul Kennedy. We head toward quarter number two, and airing it out is Northwestern. Contact incomplete inside the 10-yard line. There defensively was Stephen Ellick to make the play as once again Antonio Bryant is on the receiving end. Check that. That was that was Lamont Finney. Lamont Finney probably the fastest man on the field, and that's saying something going up against the 5'5 junior Stephen Ellick. Great job by Ellick. There was contact downfield, both looking for the ball. Good no call. We've had only one first down so far in the first quarter. Torrey Cox wide open. And he's able to pull it in. Well, they went deeper. Cox was on underneath they at the 30-yard line, and uh, that is Finney. Here you can push the defender back and come back this way. <laughs> Let's take a peek right here. Look, Torrey Cox, this is what I mean. He was wide open, but Sheffield does a great job. He looks a little bit farther downfield, finds a wide open Finney. Great job, and they pick up the first down. They run the twins. You see Antonio Bryant going upfield. Finney takes the out. Great play, great read by Sheffield. Just the second first down of this foot. They're hard to come by. There is Cox, Slithers, and a move to the 22. Pick up a bait on the play as Cox begins to warm up. You see those carry of the night, pardon me, Sean. I'm sorry, Paul. You look at those stats. Lead, leads Dade County, or led Dade County, with 1,300 yards. That is an impressive feat in itself. There's over 50 schools in Dade County, and he was the top rusher. But you know what? As good as Torrey Cox is, he'll be the first to credit his offensive line, maybe the best offensive line in the state of Florida, led by Big Vernon, Vernon Carey. On second down, blitz coming, motion up front. It appeared Gerard Cummings moved number 79. See if he did for Northwestern. Well, it's against Miami Northwestern. Maybe I should explain to him. In high school football, it's a little bit different than the upper levels. You see in the pro game Dead where ball. defenders will come across. And Coach Mitch, go. go. They'll, uh, they'll come across the line of scrimmage, but if they get back before the ball snap, it's not offside. In the high school game, regardless if you make contact or not, whoever moves first, that's a penalty, and that's what happened there. You saw two teams move, it's just who moves first. On first down, and the ball spotted at the 18-yard line going in. Again to the 15. Let's check in with Mr. Bates. Hey guys, when Coach Billy Roll decided that his team needed some new uniforms this year, he told the guys to draw up some pictures of what he thought would be the best looking uniforms for his Bulls. Number 36, Teddy Richardson, had the best drawing. What you see tonight was Teddy Richardson's drawing and his theory on what these Bulls should look like in the state playoffs, and they are looking sharp. Almost like the Denver Broncos down here, Paul. Teddy Richardson's an artist, has creative talents to him. Hey, you know what? Both teams are 13 and 0. Second down. On the end around, and devoured on the play by Arthur Stewart, who crushes Antonio Bryant. Stewart, bearded, all the way back at the 24-yard line. The leading tackler for the Jackson Generals. Very difficult to run a reverse against teams with this speed. And Arthur Stewart tells Antonio Bryant, yes, it is a wonderful life. A loss, we'll call it about nine on the play. As Stewart with 135 tackles on the year. He needs two Gs for Generals on that helmet. He's made three times as many tackles as his nearest teammate, and he ear -holed, he ear -holed Antonio Bryant on the play. A pause in the action in the second quarter, still scoreless. Jackson Sheffield with three touchdown passes against Plantation. Last week, the three different receivers enjoying a first down just outside the 10. They load it up. And he'll keep it on the ground. Franklin Burton on his first carry of the night, the senior tailback. 
Burton scored two separate fourth quarter touchdowns last week as Northwestern pulled away from Plantation. So there's another weapon, number 29, for Miami Northwestern. The Bulls will use a litany of backs led by Torrey Cox, but they'll also use Rashad, Rashad Smith and then Franklin Burton. But you might see here, here they go. Look for the tight end. And the throw, scrambling and slipping down back near the line of scrimmage. You don't have a lot of time. And he lost the ball. They lost the ball again, and Andre Oliver hobbling off. Taped up, injured, and all may have fallen on his second fumble of the first half. Two turnovers by Sheffield and the Bulls in the first half. And both fumbles have come deep. Jackson territory. This time, this is a play where they run. They keep two tight ends in. He's looking for the tight end. He's looking for David Williams. He can't find him. And there, the ball pops loose. He really wasn't even hit. It looks as if he ran into his own man, number 65, Clay Guillaume. The ball pops loose, and Andre Oliver, second time tonight, he's Johnny on the spot. Two collisions with Guillaume, and Oliver has pounced on a couple of turnovers. Stefan Logan wants to work it out. Sean, let's make this point. I don't know if the offenses are on top of their games this evening, but defensively, both the Generals, as we have seen, and now the Bulls are ferocious. Billy Roll, congratulations in his second season. Selected the 6A Coach of the Year, and his special day for Northwestern is defense. Yes, he's the defensive coordinator. He's done some real nice things with this Northwestern defense. He did a great job in, ac in accommodating the Southridge, a wing T team. Then he has to come in next week and play Plantation, a team that just spread them out. And he's been able to do it and stop every team in his path. The left-hander Kang able to connect on the Vicator out across the 26-yard line and into the arms of Julius Davis. And it's a gain of 18. There is a flag down, though. King Hall back to pass the south ball and great play. And there you see number 86, Julius Davis, wide open in the yeah, secondary, but it looks like another penalty. Offense. Uh, another major holding call. Perhaps you can pick it up in the interior. Well, first take a look at the Weavers, because they're the one that probably get held on every single play. For good reason. <laughs> you just there it is. To the top, and there, there you see good. the hold right there. The Weavers, I talked to them before the game. They said last week against Plantation, he goes, they're like, Sean, we were held on every single play. And I go, how's that different from any other game you play? They go, oh, it was no different, but we were held on every play. And a fistful of Weaver there, and there's two of them, Jamel and Jurel. Picture poison. You see the tape on his left hand, on his fingers? That's so that his players on the field can see the signals that he's giving. Out of his own end zone, ends on and out of field, and he overshoots Tavares Capers. We're playing 6A action this evening on Sunshine Network. A very busy evening. Bradenton Southeast and Vero Beach playing north of here in Vero. And the victor of that game will meet our winner this evening in Gainesville on 8 o'clock start. In 5A, it will be either Daytona Mainland and Osceola against Astoro and Lakeland. In 4A, Jacksonville Reigns, Madison County, Glade Central, Monsignor Pace. On to 3A, Balls in Mariana, Pope John Paul of Ahoke. And at 2A, and these different classifications are based on the size of the school, of course. That is Tip coming back for the ball. Caper is able to make the catch. But he's dropped back at the 10-yard line. Based on the enrollment size of the 10th, 11th, and 12th graders at each school, and we will have more on that at halftime tonight. We concluded here with 2A. There you see the 2A brackets, Liberty County and Tallahassee, North Florida, Christian. Chiefland, they're up in Fort Lauderdale right now. They're playing and going up against American Heritage, and we'll be tracking all the scores for this game. This is your one-stop shopping for high school football tonight. And then on the Gridiron Report next Thursday, you'll see the highlights of all of them. But Paul, we have the match of the years. Block this Carlos Martinez trying to punt. Sacked on the play by Franklin Burton. Of all ways to score.
But Paul, are you surprised? Neither offense has been able to score. It might as well have been the defense to put the first points on the board. So bowl two, it's two to nothing. Just a lack of concentration. How would you like to pick up the ball and take a look at that? Great work by the men in the end zone, our camera guys. One more time, he turns around and he realizes he has nowhere to go. He did a smart thing, however. He recovered the ball. It's better that the score is two to nothing than six to nothing. So in Soul Bowl two, a two-point score starts the game. Burton with the great play. And now Northwestern will also enjoy possession of the football. The free kick by Miami Jackson from their 20-yard line. First points tonight scored by Northwestern in quest of what would be their 12th consecutive victory over Miami Jackson. Billy Roll in his second season as head coach, his seventh at Miami Northwestern. As an assistant and defensive coordinator for five years, has been a large part of Northwestern's success in this series. Kicked away by John Woods. The ball's picked up by Lamont Finney. And Finney runs it out to midfield. Man, is he dangerous. He's the man that broke the game open against Southridge with a 65-yard punt return. Broke the game open. They were only up 14 to 10. His electrifying play has enabled Northwestern to pull away from teams. Here he gets the ball. Look at this great catch. Very difficult to catch a kick over your shoulder. And then he looks for the wedge. And he is so quick in hitting the wedge. And then look at this. Look at the great balance. He may be little, but there is a college in America that he can help next year. Still again, Big Ed Cox is drilled down. It's Arthur Stewart. With a shot heard around the Orange Bowl. But Paul, Stewart levels Cox. But Paul, remember what I said in the first quarter. I was talking to you in the break. Their defensive linemen were making those plays, allowing their linebackers to roam free. But now the offensive line starting to assert themselves, and now the linebackers are the ones in the backfield making the play. We'll have to see if that affects the defense of Jackson, if Northwestern can exploit it through the air. Two to nothing, our score. Following the safety, the putter tackled in the end zone. Carlos Martinez. And now Northwestern trying to take advantage of the first big momentum swing of this football game. It comes midway through our second quarter. The blitz is on. Cox gets away from one tackle. Nearly tripped up in his backfield by Stewart. And he pushes the ball back to the... Oh, the 45-yard line, and now they're drawing at each other, and flags are thrown. Other scores in the second quarter, Osceola leading Daytona Mainland in the 5 in. We covered Osceola earlier in the season. Look at that. Look at that score. Reigns, the defending 4-8 champs over Madison County in the second quarter, 7-0. Lamont Sr., the other Dade County team in action. Pace over Glade Central up in Belle Glade, 15-10. We have us both Pahokee, eight, Pope roll. John Paul, we have seven, that's a shocker. Roll. Those two teams that. played five weeks ago. Pahokee won it 60 to 10. James Bates would be on the right of your screen there. <laughs> Wow. That is not Tommy Boy, Adam Sandler, in disguise to his left, is it? Water Boy. A hundred million dollars on that movie. And James is making another one now with Oliver Stone. On any given Sunday, I guess anything can happen. Gee, Rick. This is the fourth consecutive year that two teams from Dave County have reached the state's South semifinal. So much tradition. A wealth of athletic talent on third down. And drop once again, Stewart, for a loss of six on the play. All over Bernard Godby. The Northwestern offense is based on reads. Someone better find Arthur Stewart. You have to think that the Northwestern coaching staff is going crazy. That time, number 32, Emmanuel Page, didn't even look for the blitzing linebacker. He went off to the right, and in comes Stewart, absolutely untouched, and makes the play on the quarterback. Stephon Logan stands alone to field this punt, and the kick is away. Very nearly blocked. There was pressure. And Logan goes down quickly. 
quickly to good special teams hustle, James Gerald. Number three sprints downfield to Gunning. And made the stop. James Stewart and Jackson down to in period number two. Well, the South loves trucks. It's all there is to it. For work or play, just get out and do it. This Dodge Ram Club Cab boasts these popular Southern features, including a mighty Magnum V8. Choose to buy or choose to lease. Either way, you're choosing the truck ranked most appealing full size for the fourth straight year. The truck stop of the new South. The truck stop of the new South. The new Dodge. The new Samsonite Silhouette 6 was recently introduced to an unsuspecting audience. They, however, responded to it immediately. Many took to the maneuverability granted by its four wheels. Others to its rather ingenious stacking shelves. And still others, well, just took to the whole style of it all. Travelers everywhere, it could be the answer to your prayers. The Samsonite Silhouette 6. World proof. The Florida High School Champion Series is presented in part by Gary Farmers. Got milk? We do here in the Orange Bowl this evening on a picture-perfect night for high school football and the semifinal showdown. 96 teams throughout the state play at 6A, and these two literally but 10 blocks apart from the same neighborhood. Lots of soul in the Orange Bowl tonight. Live across the street from your rival this year. Bragging rights. Last throughout the year. Good solid run by Stephon Logan on first down. To work the ball out across the 25 to the 26. 1,300-yard rusher on the year. In Logan. The statistics on Logan are quite impressive, and considering he's a junior, that makes it even more impressive. 1,200 yards. But remember, Northwestern defense, they put the weavers on the ends, and they're saying you're not running outside. So that means you have to run inside, and that's what Jackson's trying to do right now. And we might have a face mask. Travis Worthen, the Northwestern linebacker, appeared to get his hand on Logan's face mask. Face mask. Defense. More than the linebacker there. Just reaching a, a very quickly moving Stefan Logan. That can happen so unintentionally, and, and it's very costly. That's a first down. They'll march in a major infraction, our first of the night, all the way out to the 44-yard line. Well, there is no minor infraction in high school football when it comes to the face mask. If you grab it, it's going to be 15 yards. To the chagrin of Billy Roll, a Florida A&M graduate. They have nine players currently at Florida A&M from Northwestern. Playing for Billy Joe. Pouncing on the loose ball. Ricky Gibbs. Jackson running back heads up to fall on it. There is Gibbs. Congratulations, by the way, to the Rattlers of Florida A&M. They had a tremendous season. Did Billy Roll's alma mater for Billy Joe. I believe they're... Was it their quarterback or was it Bethune's quarterback? Patrick Bonner. Patrick Bonner was uh, the Eddie Robinson player of the year. Transferred in from Temple. Made the right move. Enjoyed a tremendous season. Hit the back, trailed and drop. Down he goes. What a collision. A big hit by Brandon Yarvin. Let's see if we can take a peek. Of course we can take a peek. He comes in unblocked. Great read. And... There is some hitting going on on the floor of the Orange Bowl tonight. This time, bam, here comes Brandon Yarber just laying the lick, dropping the hammer, as we say on gridiron, on Stephon Logan. As Yarber, the 250-pound senior defensive tackle, with his first big shot of this football game, the loss on the play is a five. Loose ball again, and Jackson able to fall on it. It appeared, before being ripped away, the officials converging, and it will be given to Northwestern. That's Issa Gary. Issa Gary on the ball. Well, I was going to say, Paul, that we were talking about the imaginary 50-yard 
line line that they're trying to get across. They weren't able to do it there, but they got very, very close. And this time, this is their second fumble in three plays. The ball's on the ground, but watch. They just ripped the ball out. Issa Gary does a great job and then shows it to the official. Let's take a peek at this one more time. They're trying to run the quick trap, and that's where all the chaos happens. And it looks as if Jackson gets it, but watch Gary. Just puts his big, strong arms in there, puts those pipes down there, and he gets the ball. And Cox down to the 33. Cox last week in the victory over Plantation broke one. He went 54 for a score, had 110 yards in his first few carries, and then was injured in the second quarter. That run came on the third play of the game against Plantation. What made it so spectacular is he broke about three tackles. He's very little, but he's very strong. And the other thing you have to love about Torrey Cox is he never looks for the boundary. He's always looking to go upfield. And get outside this time. James Green, the linebacker, rolled him down. One of Billy Roll's great concerns for his Northwestern offense was the skill, the speed of James Green and the linebacking core for the Generals. One thing that Northwestern did very successfully a week ago was their isolation play. They try to single out a linebacker, and then they try to isolate against him and put their best back, Torrey Cox, against the man they want to isolate. The problem is, this week, Jackson's defense, a lot faster than Plantation, they're just coming straight after him, and they have no time to even isolate on anybody. They can't hold their blocks. Fitting out this way. Bryant in the slot, third and needing nine. David Williams, the tight end, flops to the far side left. Out of the gun, got me. Under pressure, trying to avoid the sack, loses the ball. It's recovered by Northwestern, but the loss is back to the 46, and Godby is shaken up. There is also a penalty marker down. What more could happen on one play? And it's motion against Northwestern. A sack, a fumble, and Northwestern pounces on it and takes the flag, James Bates. Guys, for a lot of great athletes out on the field, but I've probably found the best athlete ever to come out of this area, Nat Moore. Nat, is this a fun game or what? I mean, two of the best schools in the area. Well, this is what it's all about. You know, two high schools going after each other. You got 45, almost 50,000 fans out here to see them play. And, you know, as a young guy growing up, I remember playing in these same surroundings. We never had 50,000, so it shows you just how college, I mean, high school football has grown. It's exciting. Let's, let's watch the end of this play here. Now, Nat, I know you do a lot of things with Sunshine Network and, and the golf golf charity and, and everything like that, but, uh, you know, a lot giving back to this community and these kids. are There's so much talent out here and there's so much enthusiasm. Just a great community to be a part of and to give back to, isn't it? Without a doubt. You know, and, and one of the great things, uh, if uh, you guys are able to catch some of it on uh, doing the broadcast, you got guys like Brett Perham. you got a lot of athletes that have went to college, played pro ball or just play college ball that are back here working with the kids. We got a whole host of the Miami Dolphins over there. If you want to turn the camera over there and see all the Miami Dolphins over there, let me help you out. I got to help you out. All those guys come to support high school football here. And you got to be excited about the Gators coming back and playing in the Orange Bowl. Well, that's the greatest thing of all. You know, being the Gators have not been here since 1986. Uh, it's great to get them back in the Orange Bowl. It's good for the, the Gator fans and the alumni here because, you know, we catch so much. I mean, I mean, so much grief down here because the Gators don't play the Hurricanes. But as the Hurricanes get better, then they'll step up and we'll play them again. Right. Well, good deal. We'll have a good time tonight, Nat. Okay, guys. Stephon Logan. A game that had, was such headlining appeal that the Miami Dolphins would turn out to watch these guys play football. Well, let me ask you something. These are professional athletes. They're the Miami Dolphins, and they're down here in the down here in the bowels of the Orange Bowl. You think they could get better seats? Well, we have a moment. For 79 years, the Florida High School Activities Association has provided educational athletic programs through which Florida students have learned by doing. The FHSAA provides champion programs in 21 sports, an all-time high for 184,000 student athletes. King Hill throws, and it is caught by Tavares. Capers has loose. Look at the speed he's gone. Touchdown, Generals. Eight yards with a jet. NK 
five for Capers, 68 to put Joe Redmond's Generals in front. The extra point try by Carlos Martinez, and it is good. It's seven to two, thanks to number seven in Capers. As Jackson looks to knock off Northwestern for the first time since 1987. It's an amazing run that the Northwestern Bulls have had on the Jackson Generals. It's become such a, a weight bearing over the Generals, you almost think that you, you almost can't get it off your shoulders. It's been so many years. But here comes a great play, and this is the kind of jump start that the Generals need. A little slant pattern, Levy Brown falls down, and then he's going to be knocked away by number 88. And away we go. Sherwin Dean with a nice block on Levy Brown, and then all Capers has to do is run away from the Bulls. Stunned is Billy Roll. Avoiding the big play, his hallmark. And Northwestern, look at the faces. How rare is this? They have not been beaten this year. Perfect 13-0. We near the half. They trail. it away. Pretty good footing to it, James Jones. All right, Lamont Finney. Out shy of the 35-yard line. And that is where the Bulls will begin. You must stick around at halftime. The Battle of the Bands. Marching on from Northwestern and from Jackson. A spectacle in itself. And a presentation by Jim Lieberter, the Vice President and General Manager of this network to the Florida High School Activities Association to benefit Trash Powell Field. So rich in history, the home throughout most of the year in Dade County to high school team. Northwestern and Jackson, that's their home field, both of them. How does Northwestern respond with a minute and 24 to go? Against a six-man rush, got the unload. Caught by Finney, close to the first down marker at the 43-44 yard line. Well, we're under 90 seconds. As we'll update you on this two-minute offense, check it out if you will, what's going on around the rest of the state. Jacksonville range, 13-3, trying to get back in that 4A final. And look at this. It's not at zero, cheap in American Heritage. Got me to the sidelines. Gerald with the first down, and he's into Jackson territory at the 41-yard line. Between Gerald, the senior, and his classmate in Finney, so much speed. And with 52 seconds remaining in the first half, they've gone all the way down to the 42. Lakeland, 14, Estero, 0. Estero, the magical boys of Estero making it to the state semis. And this, this is a shocker. 8-7, one-point lead for Pahokee. Got me. Flag down. Maybe another holding call. And he is taken down. Already sacked six times, or rather five times, in the first half. And it is against Northwestern. Legal procedure. One more score for you. They're locked Get up. Motion. Those two, the winner Offense. of that game, of Five course, yards. plays the First victor down. here. Great job by both those teams and both coaches. Coach Paul Meckley, who was on the Champion Series, the very first game we did this year for Bradenton Southeast from a runner-up spot, had to play a three-way tiebreak just to get into the playoffs, making a spectacular run with their sophomore quarterback, Adrian McPherson. And what about Billy Livens? He's a legend at Vero Beach, and he's one game away from getting back to the finals. Only the second penalty of the night against Northwestern by our count. Throws deep. Good looking ball. Contact, no flag though. At the 15 yard line. Excellent defense played there by Ben Johnson. 33 seconds remaining. There is a flag, however, in the backfield. All the way back upfield is Gerald and Johnson. We're going stride for stride. Let's take a look at the contact downfield. 
kind of see it there at the end. Not so much that this ball was uncatchable. Probably a flag could be called, but I think it's more of a situational play. And the referee deemed that it wasn't worthy of a interference call. Stefan Ellick there defensively. Apparently that's where Northwestern wants to go because that's who they've been attacking all night. And if you're wondering about Curry Burns, the big-time safety for Jackson, number 12, who had the big game a week ago, the two-interception game against Dillard, they're trying to just completely take him out of the game using tight end David Williams, number 82. They want him lined up with Burns, and they're just completely running away from him and passing to the other side of the field. That's why you haven't seen Curry Burns tonight. Timeout has been taken by Miami Jackson. They will have... Two remaining with half a minute to go. As Billy Roll talks to his staff, tries to find a way to work this ball into the end zone. He has hurt himself here with the penalties. While we have a moment, we remind you that the Florida High School Champion Series, and it's been a wonderful year. We certainly have enjoyed it on Sunshine. It's brought to you this evening by Troop. Their brand is live. Our brand is true. Those t-shirts have been selling by the thousands throughout Miami this week. So bold too. Pennants, hats, souvenirs of all kinds in celebration of this game. When you take a look at rematches during the season, usually the team that wins the first one wins the second one. Jackson had to go through it. They had to play Carroll City in week 11, and then they had to play Carroll City in the first round of the playoffs. They were able to win both games. A year ago, Carroll City did the trick, beating Jackson in week 11 in the first week. The trick is, can Northwestern, who won the early game, come back and win the second? First and 15. Godby sets up the little slip screen. Lamont Finney gets his hands on it. Dangerous in the open field. Tripped up as he comes across midfield. That may have been a touchdown saving tackle by Lewis Gashlin. I'm surprised they haven't gone to this sooner with the incredible rush that Jackson's been getting and bringing their linebackers. Why not use it against them? This time they do, and Finney, the fastest man on the field, poor tackling, some great blocking, and like you said, one man away. Nice job Roll. by Edward Roll getting to Finney. And as you take a look at past champions and... Folks, you can see where they're all coming from. In 6A, they come from Dade County. The Chiefs, the back-to-back -back champs. Northwestern, 95 under Willie Goldsmith, the great team with Marvin Minnis. Pensacola, Washington in 1994. They upset the defending champs at the time, Miami Southers. That was Don Solinger's team. Don Solinger won it in 93, beating Bradenton Manatee, who won it in 92. And in 91, that's right, Southridge and Orlando Evans. The last time and the only time there was a tie in the finals in the FA HSAA at that time did not have a tie-breaking mechanism in the finals. They had it in the playoffs, not in the finals, and both teams walked away as co-champions. Joe Redman last year in the postseason lost to Carroll City, who went on to win 6A, as you saw, in the first round. So Redman is cross paths with the best. And hunting here tonight, a win that will put him into the championship final. And there is Lewis Gasson. That is the sixth sack of a Northwestern quarterback in the first half tonight. Folks, Northwestern's going to have a lot of problems if they are going up against a three-man rush and Lewis Gaslin comes through practically untouched and gets a sack on the quarterback. Eight men back for Jackson, three-man rush, and Gaslin gets in and gets a sack immediately. That's a big concern for Billy Roll. His only points tonight have come on the safety. He's been unable, for the most part, to keep the generals out of his backfield. Anthony Shellman cannot go up against Lewis Gashlin on that play. And when it's a three-man rush, here he just comes right around Shellman and gets right to Sheffield. Obviously, it's a slow-developing play. They're trying to go deep. Shellman's got to do a better job against Gashlin, one of the better defensive ends, not in Dade County, but in the state. By the tens of thousands, fans continue to arrive at the Orange Bowl. We are at the half, the lower bowl of this historic stadium. Nearly filled, especially between the goal lines. Through the years, in the high school ranks, in the college ranks, of course, the bowl game played here 
And with the Miami Dolphins, as we were reminded just a short while ago by Nat Moore, there have been some monumental games played in this stadium. It is, of course, the 30th anniversary of Super Bowl III. Joe Namath guaranteeing the win over the Colts. And this, the Super Bowl of high school football this year in South Florida. Godman, the slip screen to Finney. Stewart, a big hit. A late flag in, away from the football. Hold on. Don't leave the field just yet, Coach. This might be a late hit, and if it's a defensive penalty, the half cannot end. They might get one more crack. Offense, hand to the face. It's against the offense rather than the defense. They'll decline it. Hands to the face. Hands to the face, decline. Well, we are at halftime. This is a stutter. It's been defensively dominated. The only touchdown, the big play, 68 yards, King Hill to Tavares Capers and a safety by Northwestern. Here's James Bates. Here with Coach Redmond, uh, Jackson head coach. Coach, those seven points with the way these defenses are playing have to look pretty up on the scoreboard right now. Well, it feels good. Our team is playing well. We just got to eliminate the mistakes. We're going to throw the football more in the second half. We didn't have good field position, but... Our team hung in there. Our defense did a superb job. Our defensive coaches are really great guys. They're doing one hell of a job. Good deal. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. All right, James and Coach just ahead. Did it help many a great game, and right now we have a thriller. The Northwestern Bulls, the number four team in the country, the number two team in the state, now number one with their win against Plantation a week ago, are down, have yet to score an offensive point in this game. They only have two points. The Jackson Generals have the only touchdown, a 68-yard touchdown pass from King Hall to DeVaris Capers, and that's where we stand at the half, seven to two. The winner of this game will advance to Gainesville, Florida Field next Saturday and will play the winner of Vero Beach in Bradenton Southeast. That game is all knotted up at seven and this is your one stop shopping for all the high school games in the state of Florida. But right now it's the 1998 Battle of the Bands and let's go down to the field and take a peek at the Jackson General Marching Band.
to two. Hello, everybody. I'm Sean Alvishar making his way back to the booth. Paul Kennedy and Paul, now it is time to do some highlights. Well, there have been many of them here, Sean, offensively and defensively. Northwestern at the ball to watch. Here comes James Doomerville, the hand that rocks the cradle with the sack on Burnett Godby. Defense wins championships. James Doomerville knows it. But the fumble, Northwestern, they're not laying the smack down. They're laying the ball down here. Allenson Sheffield, the ball on the ground. One of two fumble recoveries by Andre Oliver. But deep in their own territory, force the punt. Carlos Martinez cannot handle the ball. And here comes the Bulls defense, the running of the Bulls. And they get in the end zone, they get together, and they do the safety dance. The Bulls are leading 2-0. to zero. But the Jackson Generals were not through before the half. Here, King Hall back the pass. The south ball looking deep. And he finds Tavares Capers on the slant. He's going to break some tackles, get some couple blocks, and away he goes. And he who gets the ball and runs away lives to score another day. And that is where we stand at the half. The Generals on top of the Bulls, 7-2. to two. That was an iambic pentameter, I think, for a shot. Huh? Halftime stats are brought to you by the new Dodge this evening. As we get to those numbers in a minute, we're already set for our kickoff. Two bands, check presentation, and Stefan Logan getting waxed up at the 19-yard line. Now let's take a look at these numbers here. Obviously, defense is going to dominate, and the sacks that Miami Jackson has been able to muster here, six in all, 35 yards net rushing for the Bulls tonight. Well, it's kind of funny, a week Minus ago... Minus 35, pardon me. All the excitement in the Orange Bowl a week ago was all about offense. The UCLA Bruins and the Miami Hurricanes, I guess they left all the offense in that game. Because this game, 7-2, to all about defense. Miami Jackson, which elected to play defense to open this contest this evening. I'll have the ball to get our third period underway. With Sean Abelshire, I'm Paul Kennedy. Down on the field, James Bates. It really has to be in his element, the way that this game has been played. The former outstanding linebacker, and Stefan Logan, Works it out. Stopped there by Levy Brown. Levy Brown, such an integral part of the Northwestern Bulls offense. And Paul, there looks to be a penalty on the field, an unsportsmanlike penalty against the Generals, which will back them up 15 or half the distance. The ball sits on the 21, so it looks like it will be a half the distance penalty. It's a dead ball penalty, which means they lose the down as well. The Jackson Generals have not helped themselves at all with the penalties in this game and have put themselves in very difficult situations. That's the seventh penalty of the football game against Joe Redmond and the Jackson Generals. And his quarterback comes nearly all the way to the sideline in King Hall to, to get the play. Fox rolling. Play clock becomes a factor. They hustle it up to the line of scrimmage. Tavares Capers to the bottom of your screen. The only touchdown so far. And there goes Logan. Logan has been held in check for the most part tonight, Sean. That's his ninth carry of the night. He rushed for only 17 yards in the first half. Let's take a replay. Let's see what Northwestern's trying to do. They put the five-man front, but if you look, they're putting number 98, Jarrell Weaver, in a three-point stance. They're not standing him up. They're trying to move him around a little bit, making it harder to find him on the Northwestern line for the Jackson Generals. That time he gets in there and makes the play and the tackle. Two teams from the same neighborhood, the same district, and now battling to go to the state championship. Men on the field tonight, these young men believe that their district's the finest in all the state. Well, they should. Depends on the spot where they mark it. The catch was good by Capers right at the 20-yard line. Well, check that. It'll be now third down and spotted at the... Um, or fourth down, rather, to 20. Another look. Due to the penalty, they were backed up, and since it was a dead ball penalty, they lost the down, so that makes it third down. This was really a simple play, low and away, no chance of an interception, just try to clear some room for their punter. As we get set for the punt, here's James. High snap. Pulled down by 
Martinez. And on the bounce, Vince Gerald swung under. 48 yard line. The only points tonight registered by Northwestern on a muff punt by Martinez. Tackled in the end zone. Here able to tumble it out for 33 yards. The return was off six. Northwestern really can't complain about anything in this football game. They have pinned Jackson deep, which is what they want to do. They have been able to force them on three and out on many occasions, which is what they want to do. And they've been getting great field position. The one thing that has been probably the biggest shock is the Jackson general defense keeping the offense out of the end zone. Operating out of the gun, Burnett Godby. He did not start this game. On in relief of Sheffield, and he's running all the way. Spinning to the 35. First down, 33. Paul, tonight we're seeing a little bit of the ineffectiveness of Torrey Cox. He has not been able to get off to the star-studded performance he did in the first solo bowl, and now they're using him more as a decoy. This time, they just lead with him. It's a straight lead play, and he's the lead blocker out of the shotgun. Gets a nice block and great running by Godby. But I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing Burden and we start seeing uh, Rashad Smith in the game because Cox has really not been able to get on his game. Longest running play of the night. They're going to do it again. Against those blitzing linebackers, why not? Once you break the line of scrimmage, you have running room. Two plays, there a gain of eight. So he's come 22 yards following the gain of 14. And now moving the ball. This is the second time they've run this play, but what I don't understand, Corey Cox is the man in the backfield. He's not a fullback. Why don't you put Rashad Smith, who plays tailback, but has played fullback all year in the backfield. You get a much better blocking back in the game to lead on that play. Shoulder to shoulder with his quarterback out of the gun. A major adjustment at the half was to let Gottlieb run the ball, and it's effective here. That's a first down at the 21-yard line. Billy Rule delegates his offense to Tim Harris, his offensive coordinator. The head coach in Rule focuses on the defense. Harris handles the offense, and this is Harris making a major adjustment. Harris, as you said, is the offensive coordinator, and he has complete control in three consecutive plays. The quarterback draw leading with Torrey Cox, the tailback. And once again, they line up in the same formation, the shotgun with Cox off center to the left. First down, trailing 7-2. to two. And throwing, and it is intercepted to the 30 and down the sideline. Still on his feet at midfield. Picked off by Xavier Williams. And a 37-yard return. Very difficult pass to throw at the high school level. The out pass. Got be back to pass, has plenty of time. He steps into it, but look, he just doesn't have the zip. And that's the difference between Dade County football and the rest of the state. Their quarterbacks have such incredible closing speed. And that time, Xavier Williams, one of the best in the business, steps in front of the pass. Great job. Great hustle by the Northwestern offense getting down there and making the tackle. Joe Redmond's like, come on, keep running. Run on down. you got to keep going. Great play by Xavier Williams. And this is the best starting field position Jackson's had all night. Xavier Williams led the generals in interceptions this year. And Burnett Godby being consoled. They were marching, were they not? Running him out of the shotgun. Single wing football. The question is, what's the mindset right now of Burnett Godby? Do they come back with Allen and Sheffield? Especially if Jackson's able to take this in and store. Who knows what kind of condition Godby might be in coming back in the second half. The Jackson Generals, we are told, have used their first timeout of the second half following the turnover. And we'll remind you, not since 1987 has Miami Northwestern fallen to Jackson. They have won 11 consecutive years, 16 of the last 17 in this fiercest of rivals. Ken Hill, that's a page out of Northwestern's playbook. We can do that too. He loses the ball though, and it's recovered by a general. While Ronnie Jones, regularly a quarterback, 
Now playing wide receiver fell on the ball. Let's take a peek. King Hall back to pass. And that's the one thing that they wanted to do. They wanted to break the lanes of Northwestern. That time you saw number 98, Jarrell Weaver, almost in a zone blitz. He came right off the line. Little differentiating of their defense here in the second half. But that time, King Hall able to take advantage. The gain on the play was a 10. Alan Tanner and Hall on loads. Is it caught or not? It appears to have been ruled a completion and is downfield at the 27-yard line. Paul, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Pahoki and Quan Bolden, the odds-on favorite to win Mr. Football, 20 to 7. Reigns, the defending 4A champs, up 13 to 3 against Madison County. Jacksonville Bowls, 14, Mariana 7. That game being played in Mariana. Some great games being played all across the state. And on Gridiron Report, to see the highlights, all of them, next Thursday. Following the gain of 12, they're going for the end zone. Papers it picked off. Intercepted by Libby Brown. Trying to do too much too soon. They're moving the ball. Look at this great play by Levy Brown. Stride for stride with Tavares Capers. Hall back to pass. Has plenty of time. Going deep. Just a great play by Levy Brown. That's all you can say. Just stride for stride. Poor decision by King Hall. Levy Brown, the senior. With a huge play. Miami following the interception. It gathered momentum. Now look at this. Interesting call. They're marking the ball at the half inch line. Was he down there rather than in the end zone? Very interesting call. Got to. Wants to get it out of the end zone. One mistake and it's a safety. And as you know, at any level, it has to clearly be a safety for the official to call it a safety. They will always give the offense the benefit of the doubt. Look how close the ball sits to the end zone. Now in the first Soul Bowl, Northwestern was pinned deep in their own territory in the closed end. They tried to throw, and you saw it in the tees. They threw, and Ben Johnson had an interception for a touchdown. Do they try to throw out of here? Well, he goes on a staggered count. Jackson jumps. And that will uh, enable the Bulls to enjoy some breathing room. Push them back down. ball. Encroachment. Go. That's a very big play. Discipline so important. And Jackson jumped. That makes all the difference in the world, really, that close to your own goal line. So hold on. Watch the tight end. David Williams. Or rather, guy. This is just top. With some running room and then pulled out down by the safety, Ben Johnson. Let's go all the way back to the interception by Tavares Capers. Is he in the end zone when he makes this interception? Where should he be marked down? He lands as if his toes are very close to the chop. But it appeared, obviously, his momentum He's headed into the end zone for a touchback. Instead, they marked him at the one. And a whistle. Well, the FHSAA does a great job with their officials. They have separate entities. This is not a Dade County crew. It's a West Palm Beach crew. And so they try to bring in, as you could say, the officials that have never seen either of these teams Dead play. Ball. Encroachment on the offense. But the penalty against Northwestern encroachment will back them up. So, with great officials, they're down on the field. That's the call they made, and you really can't fault them for it. It was very, very close. That was Jermel Weaver talking to Billy Wall. First down and 15, the ball at the 8-yard line. Less than six minutes remaining in our third quarter. Arshad Smith, nowhere to go. Updating you on scores throughout the other classifications. And we remind you, that immediately following this game tonight, our Dodge 
Champion Series will offer finals as they are reported to us from around the state of Florida. Willie Green, Sunshine Network's sophomore of the year, now a junior, leading Osceola to a 25-0 lead over Daytona Beach Mainland. Interesting story, the quarterback of Mainland a year ago, he played for Miami Jackson. Out across the 15 to the 16-yard uh, line. On the second down, second carry of the night by Franklin Burden. And Burden is accounted for the only Northwestern points, of course, sacking the putter for the safety. They put three men in the backfield. They have two lead blockers. Cox gets a good block on number 27, Xavier Williams, but just too many men on the short side of the field. Jackson makes the play. An injured general down, and it's Arthur Stewart, the linebacker in the top of the press box of Ocala Vanguard going up against Merritt Island. It was the first year of Gridiron. No one even knew it. I was standing next to you and you go, oh yeah, Holding I hear about this Vanguard. show. This yeah. Gridiron show, some highlight show. I don't know anything about it, but some guy down there is doing it. Five years later, can you imagine where Gridiron has gone, the, the live games, everything that Sunshine Network has brought to the table in just a short five years. It's been great, don't you think? Yes, it has been. It's fantastic. Um, we're very proud of what uh, Sunshine Network has done for high school sports in Florida. The live uh, games on Friday nights has brought tremendous exposure for the schools and for the student athletes, uh, which are members of the Florida High School Activities Association, um, which uh, boasts the best high school football in the nation. It's absolutely stunning, especially down here. This is one of the greatest scenes in high school football we've seen in a while. All laid out, but the pass is complete. All has been punished twice. Luther Huggins gets the rock this time up at the 40-yard line. Huggins with the touchdown in the first go-around between these two teams, Sean. Watch Huggins, great time, just a little button hook, and he comes right up. That is a nice play in itself, but if we had a shot of King Hall, he got absolutely crushed by number 98, Jarrell Weaver. Take a look at this. Look at Jarrell Weaver. How would you like to throw a ball with that in your chest? Great job by King Hall. Now the back of his helmet landed before any other part of his anatomy. In and out of the hands of Tavares Capers. And now a flag is thrown. So many flags in the last couple of quarters. Silly play by Yul Keith Brown. The pass was incomplete, and then he throws a little shoulder at Tavares Capers. And that's going to be a penalty and an automatic first down for Jackson. And Northwestern not playing with the composure that they've played with all year. The FHSAA is assigned one of the best in John Foster to referee this game. It is his 29th year as a high school referee. He began in 1970. Good Mr. Foster right there heading this crew. And you must say that the temperaments have been held in check among these two teams that are fierce rivals, and that's to Mr. Foster's credit. He has not hesitated to throw his flag. Jack, can you talk a little bit about the single site theory? Uh, for a while there, the last game played at a home site was the Niceville Bradenton Southeast game that year, 1988. Right. It moved to Gainesville and to Daytona Beach and Gainesville. What's the, the idea, the thought process behind the FHSAA and the single site? Well, as you know, as I said before, we feel like we play the best high school uh, football in the nation. Uh, it is our uh, premier sport in this state, and we felt like the, uh, the central site is the best way to showcase uh, those, uh, those championship games. It gives everyone in the state that would, would like to the opportunity to come to a central site over two or three days and see five outstanding football games. Next year, six outstanding football games. Uh, it gives uh, an opportunity for the kids participating in those games to be showcased on television, to be showcased and uh, have media coverage from newspapers around the state, something that is just not possible when the games are scattered all over the state all on the same night. First down now, following the penalty. Leading 7-2. Hall throws, contact, and a flag, pass interference on Sidney Simpson, the quarterback. Pass intended for Luther Huggins, and Sidney Simpson there, pumped it, knocked him out of the way. 
ball, take a peek at the pocket. Now you have to ask yourself, do you want to be a high school quarterback? King Defense Hall gets rid of it, and here comes the rush. Automatic first down. You know, if Jackson's able to win this game, they're going to have to probably take King Hall to Gainesville in a stretcher. He is just taking numerous amounts of hits. I bet you Ryan Schneider knows a little bit about that as he took a, a beating throwing for 318 yards, a, a marvelous effort by the Colonel offense a week ago against this Northwestern D. That's an important flag, though. They're inside the 30-yard line and slithering is Stephon Logan leading 7-2. to Northwestern's offense has been unable to move the ball. Miami Jackson has played a punishing brand of defense. And now they are driving for the second time in this football game very deep on Northwestern. It's a five-point lead, but if you're thinking field goal for the Generals, don't. Their kicking game is not very good. This is four-down territory for the Generals. Out of the gun. The corners come. Hall throws and complete. Nearly intercepted, not once but twice. Simpson got his hands on it for a moment. And Giovanni Ward, the free safety, dove for the ball and very nearly came up with it. Well, all night they've been going up against Sidney Simpson. They're trying to attack him. This time he's able to come through with the play, and then the sophomore, Giovanni Ward, almost comes up with the interception. Simpson's had some good plays, but he's also had a couple interference calls. Apparently that's the man they want to attack. They don't want to go after Gil Keith Brown, number four for the Bulls. Third and eight. This play, perhaps the next two, critical to Jackson pulling off the upset. Throwing in traffic, and they cannot connect here. Cyril Jones, the intended target, trying to put that through the eye of a needle between Gerald and Swain, and now fourth down. You'd have to think that a second touchdown by Jackson would be huge, and Billy Roll knows that. The way his offense has been unable to, to punch it in. The way this game has gone, if they're able to score a touchdown, a 14-2 lead might be insurmountable, which is something, saying something against the team that put up 49 points a week ago against the number one team in the state. Fourth down. important play in this game. You might think that divine intervention has camped out on the Jackson General sideline. Fourth down and nine. A crushing hit and an amazing catch by Tavares Capers. First down at the 13. And we have an injured player being attended to for Jackson. That is Capers, and he may be cramping on what is a very warm and humid night in Miami. While he's attended to, we'll quickly step aside here in the Orange Bowl. Second down, and the ball spotted at the seven-yard line. Jackson can pick up a first if they get it inside the two, and they pound the ball, drive the ball inside the five. Saw Arthur Cave, the defensive lineman, number 85, hold up his hand as if he had stripped it free. He did not, and now it is third and short. And uh, Jackson penalty aided on this drive, but this, you sense, with less than a minute to go in the third, is the pivotal point in the football game. A lot of people in this stadium and watching on statewide television are probably stunned at the developments here in the third quarter. And Northwestern will call timeout. So while we have a moment, let's remind you that the victor of this game advances to Ben Hill Griffith Stadium, Florida Field next week, and Jack with the FHSAA. There are tickets available for that. It's a wonderful affair. All five classifications performing at the Florida Final. Right. The 3A championship game is Thursday night at 7.30. The uh, 4A final is Friday at 4 o'clock. The 5A final is Friday night at 7.30. The 2A final is 
Saturday at 4.30, and the 6A final that this game, the winner of this game will participate in is Saturday night at 8. Now, last year, you played the 2A final in the evening on Thursday. Right. Why the switch? The uh, Coaches Advisory Committee, which makes recommendations to our board of directors on the policies that govern the football playoffs in our state, recommended that we rotate the three smaller classes uh, around every three years as to who would have to play on that Thursday night game. The question is, how we will, will we handle a sixth game next year? We may or may not be playing on Thursday night. We may or may not be playing two games on Thursday. We, in fact, may try to squeeze three games in on Friday and three games in on Saturday if, uh, if it all works out. We, we, the board of directors will still have to make that decision, and I'm sure we'll be right, relying heavily on the recommendation of the football coaches. Well, if someone has to, who has to cover every single game, thank you for putting three in one day. That's a real nice thought. Gee whiz. Nice play of the drive. Stephon Logan on third down. Inside the five to the four. Now, Paul, if he is short, that means there's, if they deci decide to go for the field goals from the right hash, and their kicker missed almost every kick from the right hash. And you can see a Northwestern team in a very deep moment of prayer, probably never guessing that as the third quarter comes to an end, they would be in this situation. Jackson. You see the time remaining in the quarter. Fourth down. They need two. For first and goal. They give it to the second man. Fraud. He did not get the first down. No way that Stephon Logan earned the first. The big hit by Travis Worthen. And the balls, they have a held on. And we go to the fourth quarter. Jack, we look forward to it. What a finale this ought to be. Should be a great one. Jack Watford of the Florida High School Activities Association joining us for the fourth quarter now. Billy Roll and the Bulls. Can they pull it out? Well, the South loves trucks. It's all there is to it. For work or play, just get out and do it. The truck stop of the new South. The new Dodge. The truck stop of the new South. And Let's make it rough, make it tough, make it tight, make it right, make it full of surprises, southern style. Make it ram and Dakota by a country. Waterway. We open the fourth quarter. Northwestern coming off the goal line stand. And Franklin Burden is upended right at the line of scrimmage. Ten play, Sean, by the Jackson Generals comes down to this fourth and two. I'm surprised they ran the play. They could have waited to the quarter to end, but they went for it. And what a job led by number five, Quentin Swain, and number 42, Travis Worthen. Arguably the best two linebackers as a tandem in Dade County. The best three, well, they're on the other side in the gold jerseys, the Jackson Generals. And they've been unable to hold on. It would have been at least 10 to 2. It remains 7 to 2. And Northwestern needs to drive the ball off their goal line. Let's check in with James. Guys, let's keep an eye on Torrey Cox. While the Bulls' defense was on the field the last series, he was hobbling on the sidelines. But it wasn't the same ankle that bothered him in the last game. It's his inner thigh. He's got an inner thigh bruise. And on the last two plays, they haven't handed to him. So let's keep an eye and see how he progresses. Thanks, James. Absolutely. And, and again, he did not practice shot all week. Torrey Cox is nothing short of a warrior. In the game against Central, he was awesome, and he never came out, and he always takes a beating. But will they advance? And look at this. Paul Meckley on the road, 21, Vero beats 7. Osceola, 32, Mainland, 0. And look at this. In the fourth quarter, in Lakeland, Coach Joe Hampton, two points behind the Dreadnoughts, 14 to 12. And that is very similar to a Hoosier like story if Estero can get into the 5A final. What a job by Joe Hampton and the Estero Wildcats. Maybe the single greatest story. And how about this? Out of Fort Lauderdale, American Heritage dethrones the defending 2A champions with a 10-6 win over the Chiefland Indians. 
here. 11 minutes and three seconds away from the finish line. At 94 yards away from what would be the go-ahead score for Northwestern. They have offensively not been able to put any points on the board. Special teams earned a safety for us. On third down. Hit it to go by Luke Ball in the end zone. It's thrown away by Jackson. Touchdown. Edward Rowe at the bottom of the pile. Burnett got me. He threw an interception earlier. This time he is absolutely drilled. And look at this, Johnny on the spot, number 45, Edward Roll. In play-action situation, they're forced to pass, and it's Lewis Gaslin coming through. And he definitely gashes Godby. And the recovery by Edward Roll. And with 10.38 remaining here in the fourth quarter, the Generals have taken a 13-2 lead over the Bulls. Carlos Martinez on the extra point. Joe Redmond, his defense roll after Lewis Cashlin strip. Burnett Godby of the football. As what, as Sean told you, might be an insurmountable lead, and Godby is having to be assisted off the field. Jackson Generals this year opened up the season with a loss to the Miami High Stingerees. What happened in the playoffs? They got their revenge in this stadium. 38-20. Can they avenge their only other loss? Tune in to Sunshine Network Saturday, December 19th. The Dodge Florida High School Champion Series presents the 18th annual high school basketball great Florida shootout. The doubleheader begins at 3.30. Live on Sunshine. Northwestern had lost only four fumbles all season. They lose one at the worst possible moment here in their own end zone, and Jackson tacks on its second touchdown. And the quarterback who coughed it up and got me in obvious pain. Kickoff from the 40-yard line will be fielded by Lamont Finney. Now some confusion. Gerald ran into it. Now the ball pops free. And Sidney Simpson is able to recover for Northwestern. Northwestern is reeling. They are shattered right now. It's quite obvious that the injury to Torrey Cox is much more serious than the coaches from Northwestern let on before the game. They said he would play, and Coach Torrey Cox said, no, I'm absolutely fine. I didn't practice all week. I'm ready to go. Their lack of a running game has allowed Jackson to pin their ears and go after the quarterback. What happens now? The score's 14-2. to two. They, keep, they don't have time for a long, drawn-out drive. They have to throw the football and into the game. Allen's in Sheffield. And what a stat. 130 yards the first game around. 19 in the second go round. And now two angles bothering him. As James Bates pointed out from the sideline. He moved. The center failed to snap the ball. And that will draw another flag. And will be for Northwestern its seventh of the evening. disbelieving. Has to be. He has already defeated Jackson once this year. They are 13-0 is Miami Northwestern. They have not lost this season. Under Billy, 24-2. Both those losses. Season pass. The quarterback now is Sheffield. When they know you have to pass, they will be coming. Here comes...
from Doomerville from behind. And at this rate, the Northwestern Bulls better start looking for some more quarterbacks to finish this game. He's a special player, Paul. Second down and 20, they must work the ball all the way out to the 31. Third and the first down. And a pause in action. Northwestern is going to take a timeout. Popeye in series. Jackson stalking a huge upset against its arch rival. On a beautiful night for beautiful people. The turnout in the Orange Bowl. Just a tremendous crowd here. The first go around, Sean, better than 45,000 were on hand. And tonight, right at that number, fairly close to it. I'll tell you what, Paul, Jackson's ahead, but whoever wins this game has to avoid a letdown going to the state final. I mean, a lot of people, especially these kids, believe this is the state final tonight. Out of the gun. Sheffield under pressure, and he's yanked out again. The eighth sack of this football game. Thesaurus to find more adjectives to describe James Doomerville. This is impressive. Nine sacks now make it for 60 yards the wrong way, and Doomerville has nearly half of them. Let's take a look. Here he comes. And it's not that they're not trying to block him right now. He's just unblockable. And how about this point brought up by Jack Watford, the human encyclopedia of the FHSAA? If Bradenton Southeast wins and Jackson holds on to win, two district runner-ups will advance to the state finals. Third down, 27, back to its own goal line, and movement by the tight end on the near left side, or rather the tackle on this side, Clay Gilliam. The senior jump, number 65. Dead ball, ball stop, offense. My big question for Jack is, I picked Plant City in Northwestern. Do I get any kind of brownie points for getting the districts right? <laughs> Third and 29. And the ball at his two-yard line. Going down the sideline for Finney. And Finney is unable to make the catch. One official ruled it out of bounds. The other has marked it down. And it's ruled a completed pass. The trail official initially moved and marked it out of bounds. Instead, it's ruled a catch. What a clutch play that is upfield at the 33. That's a great play by Lamont Finney, but let me tell you something. Lamont Finney got mugged on his way down there and still made the catch. I was looking for the flag. I didn't even think it was going to matter. But here Sheffield gets it up. Look at this. You see that in the hockey. And then he makes a great grab. But there was no flag and a great grab inbounds. First down for the Bulls. Did he have his feet down when he caught that ball? A high snap. Sheffield scrambling out across the 35 to the 36. The, the trail official initially says he is out of bounds. Watch his feet. Oh, this is a great shot. He only needs one. And he got it. That's a catch. A spectacular catch for Lamont Finney. And we have to commend the officials who have been getting a lot of bad press at every level at football for doing an outstanding job tonight in a very pressure-packed game here in the Orange Bowl. That was for Finney, his fifth reception this evening. He leads Northwestern in that department. Sheffield, who started the game, is taken down, hammered down. Dropped by Todrick McDonald. the junior on Sheffield. It's quickly third down. Back to the line of scrimmage. Ball at the 41. Ball at the 36. Sheffield dips. Sheffield looks, throws back to the center of the field. He just threw it up for grabs. And the 
flag after the play thrown in. Sheffield went down, dropped by the linebacker Arthur Stewart, and Stewart may be hit for a personal foul. And is. A personal foul on Arthur Stewart will give Northwestern another first down. Huge call right here. We saw Northwestern have a couple 15-yarders assessed against them on defense, which helped Jackson drive down the field and make the score 14-2, or at least get down close. They got stopped. This time, it looks as if Jackson's going to help out the Bulls. And that was absolutely a late shot by Arthur Stewart. No need for that. He's too good a player to do something like that. Well, the ball will be marked at the midfield strike. of the essence. Just over seven minutes to go. Can Jackson hold on? They have nine sacks already. And knowing that Sheffield must throw, and Lamont Finney took his eyes off the football. That's sometimes a simple case of being too open. He, he realized he had some separation. He was trying to figure out what he wanted to do after he caught it and forgot about one thing, catching the ball. It's second down. Total yards, Jackson doubling up Northwestern. Doesn't show you there that the pounding Northwestern is taken from the defensive front from the linebacking court. Joe Redman has had his generals ready to play this evening. Avoiding the sack and throwing incomplete. Sheffield very lucky he didn't go down for a tenth time. He's done a pretty good job here on this drive, avoiding the rush, getting some passes off. But right now, they're asking Allenson Sheffield to make plays. And that's something he hasn't needed to do all year. He's been the navigator of a highly powered rushing offense. And now it's up to him to get the job done. And with seven minutes remaining, we'll have to see if Sheffield is up to the task. Sheffield tonight is thrown for 90 yards. Three-step drop, yanked by his face mask. Very dangerous. And flags fly in from everywhere. Now, hopefully he's all right. You can be seriously injured when your cage is yanked as it was there. And let's bring up the point that Burnett Godby, he's injured. They had to carry him off the field. They can't afford an injury to Sheffield. Defense, 15 yards. That's a 15-yard major infraction still again. So apparently, the best offense for the Northwestern Bulls is to allow the Jackson Generals to keep committing 15-yard penalties and help them down the field. Because when they don't commit penalties, Northwestern's not going anywhere. Let's take a peek at the face mask. Great pressure up front. And it looks as if it's Lewis Gaslin coming through and just got his hand caught on the cage. First and 10 now at the 40-yard line. The drive continues. Remember, Northwestern's coming off literally its own goal line. They pump one. Dylan Gerald's number. Can't get him open. Scrambling is Sheffield, and he's held it out of bounds at the 32-yard line. What a hit over there. Xavier Williams. Paul, how concerned are the Northwestern Bulls about the Jackson rush? They only sent one man out on a pass pattern on that play. And when he wasn't open, Sheffield had nowhere to go except to start running with the ball. And that's what happened. Great downfield coverage. Take a peek. He goes. It's going to be an up and out. Now he realizes, hey, he's covered. He starts looking around and says, well, I got no one else to throw to. I better tuck it under. And then look at this. Another crushing hit. This one downfield. Here the up and out. And he tries to separate at this point, but let me tell you something, that's a dangerous pass against Xavier Williams. We've seen his closing speed already. You don't try that pass. Sheffield knew it, tucked it under, and picked up eight. Immediately following the conclusion of this game this evening, Stay with Sunshine Network, as we'll review all five classifications, semifinal action tonight. Who goes to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium and plays for the state crown? Okay, you're the account.
account coordinator for Lucky. Hectic minutes. This climactic showdown Soul Bowl to on Sunshine Network with Sean Abelshire and James Bates. I'm Paul Kennedy. Your situation this, second and one at the 31, trailing by 12, number 12 on Lowe's High. Incomplete and again pays a price. And a late flag thrown once again on the far sideline. It has become so heated, so tension filled now in the waning moments. The hitting fierce, but also extracurricular. Wham! Nothing Denzel more needs Bob. to be said. Bloom, Bloom. unsportsmanlike. 15 yards. Now, Northwestern has benefited from three major penalties flagged against the Jackson Generals. This time, this penalty appears to be against Northwestern for unsportsmanlike conduct. Think about the excitement that this arena in the past two weeks has held between the UCLA Miami Hurricane game and now Soul Bowl II. This is a great building for great events. And while Northwestern has won 11 in a row in various sites is the Orange Bowl, Traz Powell, and Joe Robbie Stadium, 11 years ago, Jackson won in this building, and they're very close from breaking the streak one more time in this very facility. Does high school football anywhere in the United States get any bigger, any more attention filled than what we have seen here this year? I don't know. I mean, it's been wonderful, hasn't it, in terms of a spectator sport? On and off the field, the play spectacular at times. Sheffield, under pressure, sack number 10! Again, Arthur Stewart and most generally. A loss of eight. The penalty pushes him back 15 yards. Here comes number one, Arthur Stewart. He's almost pointing at him saying, here I come. Unblocked, finds the gap and the sack. There's just too many men for the Northwestern Bulls to block. But they have to close in because they're giving Arthur Stewart the turnpike. They're giving him a direct lane to get after Sheffield. They're unable to close the gap right in the middle, and he's coming straight forward and getting to Sheffield. It was second and one. It's now third and 22. Rather fourth down now. Sheffield, the heat's on. He sets up the screen, and Finney falls down. Did not catch the ball. And it'll go over on downs to Jackson. Let's check in with James. Well, guys, the Sunshine Network, like Paul Kennedy, is multi-talented. They don't just do high school football. They do the Miami Fusion. And enjoying the game with me tonight is Joe Pelkowski. Joe, tell us about all the exciting events the Fusion have coming up. Well, you know, we got another exciting season of professional soccer up at Lockhart Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. And if you haven't been up there, you're in for a treat because uh, what we've, we've rebuilt up there is the premier soccer-specific venue uh, in, in the United States. Uh, right now, we're running a, a holiday special. It's the perfect gift. No waiting in lines at the mall. Just pull out your MasterCard, dial 1-888-FUSION-4. We have season tickets starting for as low as $10 a game for 18 games. Uh, and the, you have the best seats in the house for only $16. Got a new coach up there, Evo Wortman. He's just been hired as part of the United States national team staff. And we have uh, both the men's and women's national teams uh, visiting Lockhart Stadium in, in early, uh, early 1999. So we're very excited. We open March 20th with the New York Metro Stars in a rivalry that's developed uh, in the mold of, of the Miami Heat, New York Knicks, and the uh, Miami Dolphins, New York Jets. Fusion Metro Stars is quickly uh, becoming that much of a heated rivalry. So we're very excited to get started uh, with the Fusion 1999. 888-FUSION-4 for season tickets. Go by and check out the Fusion, and if you can't go check them out, watch them on Sunshine Network. All right, James, thank you very much. Second down here, and seven. And Jackson. Can they dream the impossible dream against the Northwestern Bulls? Can they be this collection of young men to wear the green and gold? The first Jackson High team to defeat Northwestern since 1987. Are they man enough to hand the Bulls their first loss of the season? Hobbling out to the far sideline, Tim Harris Capers. Motion up front. Jumping early, Calvin Tem. The offensive lineman, number 77. 
for Jackson. Ball's done. Go. And mentally, they're pressing. Got to maintain your poise here. Down the stretch with four and a half to play. We consider that these young men, many of them, were only five and six years old the last time Jackson defeated Northwestern. What it would mean in their neighborhood. Nearly a turnover. What it would mean to the school, to the trophy case, and years hence that they were the first school to knock off Northwestern, the first team from Jackson, to win in the Super Bowl. And think about this. Not only would it be the first win, but this is the first time that the Super Bowl has ever culminated in the state semifinal. 11 straight years, it's been 11 straight losses in the regular season. Jackson could say, yeah, we broke the streak, but not only did we break the streak, we broke it on our way to the state championship game. If they do it, they will have done it with defense tonight. Northwestern with only a safety to show. And finals tonight. Madison County, the upset against Jacksonville Reigns. Another champion goes down. All five defending champions have gone down in the playoffs. Chiefland earlier tonight, and now Jacksonville Reigns. Northwestern only one timeout in its possession. As you see, American Heritage, which won in an upset last week, has dethroned the reigning champion in Chiefland. North Florida Christian led by Constantine Risden, the German superstar. They win that one against Liberty County 14-0. So that means your 2A final will be Tallahassee, North Florida Christian, and American Heritage. That face, Burnett Godley, speaks volumes. Number 10. And Allison Sheffield, the other quarterback, sacked 10 times tonight. And timeout taken, the last for Northwestern. Indeed, disbelief, stunned, shocked that this could happen. And Paul, there are 40,000 people in the Orange Bowl, and we treat these guys like football heroes here on live television. But let's not forget one simple thing. And Billy Roll said it before the game. You're dealing with 16 and 17 year old kids. Yes, they are. They play like men, but they're only 17 years old, and this is a very difficult situation for them to handle. And as he talks to them, as they prayed earlier, this is something they probably never would have expected. Here's James Bates. Hey guys, I love the Soul Bowl for its football, but this halftime show is unreal. And joining me now is Jackson drum major Mike Scott. And Mike, tell me about the preparation. I mean, the, the work that goes into some of these halftime performances has to be incredible. Oh yeah, so much work. We, I mean, we practice like five days a week, every every day, from like two to six. I mean, it's, we, the kids really work hard, and I'm, I'm very proud of them. Who's the mastermind behind this uh, this halftime performance tonight? I, my band director, Mr. Clinton, came with the whole show. Well, basically, me and another staff basically came up with the dancer team. And basically, I just Mr. Clinton is he the mastermind. He does it all. Good deal. Well, it looks like you guys are going to have a chance to take all this soul up to Gainesville. And you need to take the soul to Gainesville because there are guys up there like Javon Curse, Johnny Rutledge, Zach Pillar that need some soul. They don't have much up there in, in Gainesville area. So good luck to you guys wow. next week. Thank you. What a jab at his old hater <laughs> teammates. Jermaine Fleming is the band director and does a wonderful job at uh, <laughs> Jackson High School. And Christopher Dorsey, the band director at Northwestern, tip of the cap to him. And the marching Bulls here tonight. Boy, I guess when you become a movie star, you can get your little digs in on your old former teammates. We anticipate going into the dressing room of the victor this evening. It appears that James will be marching toward the Jackson Generals, but slipping out Lamont Finney, still on his feet. Look at Finney go to the 32-yard line. Two and a half to play, but Northwestern has exhausted all of its timeouts. 156 ticks of the clock. A gain of 23. Our post-game show is coming up next. It will be special. We'll take you through all of the other games played tonight throughout the Sunshine State. Highlights of this game, and we'll go into the box dressing room as well. In and out of the hands of Howard Lewis.
complete. In that post-game show, we will have the scores of all the games that have been played tonight and show you who will be playing in the five state championship games beginning next Thursday up at Florida Field. And what a great sight for those kids, especially in the smaller classifications, to make the trip to play in the big stadium, Florida Field. It'll be great all around. It was great last year, and it'll be even better this year. Lamont Fenney is shaken up on the play. Wide receiver. The Gatorade Scholar Athlete of this week as presented by Gatorade on Sunshine Network. That man, Antonio Bryant. Great point average, close to 4-0. 1170 on his SAT. That's Harvard material there for the fine wide receiver, Antonio Bryant. Antonio Bryant a year ago played at Coral Gables High, came over to play with the Northwestern Bulls, and he's had a great season with the Bulls, and I'm sure, like the rest of the men in blue and gold, and a little bit of shock right now. I'll tell you this, how strong that is academically. I did a number of games at West Point this year. That would qualify. That SAT score would. The other scholar athlete, of course, Cyril Covington, a senior, 3.2. Great point average. For the senior, congratulations to him. On second down, throwing deep for Gerald. He makes the catch and walks in. Touchdown. Let's see what happens. This is a magical place. A lot of people have left. But with 2.22 to go, Allison Sheffield the quarterback aired it out and Gerald has the first points of the night offensively for the Bulls. James Gerald, he caught a big touchdown against Miami Southridge in the playoffs. This time, they put three receivers to the right and they leave James Gerald alone going up against Ellick and he walks into the end zone. And with the score 14 to eight, they should elect to kick the extra point, make it 14 to nine. A six point difference or a five point difference makes no difference at this point in the ball game. What they need more is the ball and they need it back in a hurry. Whistles prior to the play. Now, Paul, let me make a quick point here, regardless of the outcome of this extra point. Two weeks ago, as there's an offside penalty against Jackson, Miami High, climbing back, attempted an onside kick. Dead ball, enforcement, defense, half the distance. The ball was handled by Miller St. Hillary and returned 50 yards on an onside kick by Miami High. Looking to add the extra point, which they do. It's 14 to 9 with 2.22 to play and gets set for an onside kick. In the heart of a champion, Northwestern, refusing to go quietly, and Billy Roll has brought him back. They are still alive with 2.22 to play, but they need the football right back. They do not have any timeouts left. If they do not handle the onside kick, if they cannot get it back, they will have to hope for a turnover with no timeouts. They will be pretty much able, the Jackson Generals, that is, to kill off the rest of the clock. As you see in your screen, you can enjoy Sunshine Network weeknights at 10 o'clock for a lively one-hour roundtable of sports talk that includes you. You'll get a chance to call in and talk sports with some of the state's prominent media. Sunshine Live. Now big. How big is this? Sunshine Network Live will not be with us tonight, so we can show you the expanded coverage of the high school football playoffs. That's how big tonight is around the state and here in the Orange Bowl. And now the onside kick. Needs to go 10, of course. And he kicked it out of bounds. He almost was offsides himself. A stride past the ball put himself offsides. And then rather than getting a bounce on the ball, it'll be a line dead drive. Ball. Procedure, kicking team. Sidney Simpson, and you have to remember the Northwestern Bulls haven't been in this situation all year to run an onside kick. You almost have to question if they even practice an onside kick. They just obliterated their opponents all season. And right there we saw the inability to execute 
the kick, not even recovered, just the kick itself. He kicks it in the air. The first rule of the onside kick is you have to kick it on the ground. If the ball's in the air, Northwestern can't run under and catch it. You know, it's not like a punt. And he kicks it right out of bounds. And now the Bulls have to make a play and hope for a turnover. King Hall at quarterback. First down and Peculiar formation here and some confusion on the part of Jackson. And they may have to call timeout. They do have 11 on the field. Players were uncertain though. And now downing it on one knee. James Doom. James Doomerville has had a heck of a game for the Jackson Generals. So has that man for the Northwestern Bulls. All around, the performance tonight has been outstanding. And unfortunately, one team has to go home. And as the clock ticks right now, it looks as if it'll be the Northwestern Bulls. Consider all that has happened in the world of sport since 1987. That was the last time the team in gold defeated the team in blue. 11 straight, 16 out of 17. And once this year, Northwestern on November 6th, one by 10, 23 to 13. But tonight, when it matters most, to go to the 6A Florida High School Activities Association championship game, it appears it will be Jackson that wins and ends the Bulls run. We will talk to the coach. We will talk to the players that made this happen. Following this game this evening, James Bates will be right down in there among them. And now Jackson elects to take the delay of game penalty. Now, Paul, there is a chance that Northwestern might get the ball back with 56 seconds remaining. It's third down. They can kneel it here, but they have 25 seconds to take the next play. And on fourth down, if they immediately kneel, the clock stops. We're going to have a punt return. So we might have a punt situation occurring here for the Jackson Generals. He downs it with 55 seconds remaining, and so the play clock, 25 second play clock begins, and it's fourth down. Will take, I would imagine, Jackson. They take the delay a game that would cost them five, and thus the punt would be kicked from inside the 15-yard line. So if they, I'm sorry, if they let it go, it'll be about 10 seconds. Our truth player of the game, number 95, James Dummerfeld, five sacks tonight. A tremendous performance by the junior. Clock has not stopped yet. It should be around 10, 9 seconds. There it is, with 10 seconds remaining. 10 seconds remaining, and now, after the delay of game, what they may do on fourth down is run a play. Rather than punt. I don't believe I'd punt the football. Put it out. Well, if you run a play, you better be able to kill 10 seconds. This situation has occurred before in high school football where coaches electing to try to run around and try to run out 10 seconds, but against the Northwestern defense, they'll come at you, and if you give them the ball one chance at the 15 or the 20, I mean, that's a chance for them to win the game. You see Ronnie Jones, number 17, who is a quarterback who also plays wide receiver, has been summoned from the bench and sent in. This is a very unique situation, and it looks as if they are going to line up in a punting formation. And back goes Lamont Finney, who does have a punt return for a touchdown in these playoffs against the Southridge Spartans. Let's really go out on a limb. Can he run around long enough to take a safety? Would he do that? I don't think so. Ten seconds is a lot of time when these guys are coming after you. Back on Arthur Stewart as well. You can't take that chance. What a 20-mile-an-hour win that he would be kicking away. He lost the ball! Loose ball falling on with six seconds to go by Northwestern. They got a chance, Paul. They got a chance with six seconds to go. They recover the fumble. They have a six seconds, maybe two plays. They were going to try to run it out of the end zone, give them the safety and have them a free kick. That's the smart call. But Ronnie Jones, who is a quarterback, could not handle the snap. Jones had not punted all night long. It had been Martinez. They put in 
sit here. Ronnie Jones, he, he, all he wanted to do was get it and run out of bounds. He wanted to run straight through the end zone, take the safety, and then they'd give him, they'd have a free kick. But he could not handle the ball. He tripped over himself in his rush to run out of bounds. And Joe Redman can't believe what he has seen. 11 years of frustration of the Jackson Generals, and he has to sweat out the final six seconds. Time for two plays, Paul. Across the field, Billy Roll as offensive coordinator, Tim Harris, gather the balls. One final charge to win. There's a lot of people running back into the stadium right now. Stunned. Joe Redmond. He led 14 to two with two and a half minutes to play in this game. Northwestern out of timeouts. Do miracles happen, perhaps here tonight? Right now, you're going to see the most ferocious pass rush you've ever seen. You might see a fade pattern, anything, but they have to be able to run two plays. Nothing that will take a long time to develop. Alistair Sheffield, the quarter. Watch for the tight end, number 82, David Williams. Throw it for Burns in the end zone. He jumps, he caught it, oh my gosh, touchdown! This is amazing! They're going to get a penalty, though. Northwestern in front with one second to go. I can't believe what I just saw.
considering the magnitude of this rivalry. And the 11-year dominance by Northwestern, that this would happen to Jackson. You feel the searing pain in the heart of Cyril Jones and those young men in gold. But right now, maybe the most disconsolate person in this stadium is Ronnie Jones. Number 17, the man who went out to handle the punt. He just had to catch it and run out of bounds. He falls down and gives Northwestern one last chance. And remember, he is just a 17-year-old boy. Called off the bench. They wanted him to catch the ball and run out of the end zone. He starts for the end zone, takes his eyes off the ball, loses the ball, and Northwestern, out of timeouts, falls on it. Six seconds to play. And at the snap of the football, Sheffield finds Antonio Bryant for the victory. Not only is he the scholar athlete of the game, he is the man of the hour in Miami. Antonio Bryant with a touchdown pass. He'll remember the rest of his life, and so will everyone else that was in this stadium tonight or watching here on Sunshine. This is the absolute truth. You can never give up. And that was the essence of tonight's football game. Tory Cox on the ground in disbelief, completely shut down tonight. An inner thigh bruise, two ankle injuries, and he never came out of the game. And you can only feel for the Jackson Generals. Xavier Williams, who had a great game, a big interception in this ball game. Tavares Capers, who raced 68 yards for the longest touchdown of the year for him. He'll have He's another chance. He's only a junior. You don't think high school football means something? Sports Illustrated wrote about the death of high school football two weeks ago. I wonder if they're watching tonight. Billy Roll, the 6A Coach of the Year, will win for the 25th time. In no former measure has he had a more dramatic victory, one more improbable than the final two and a half minutes that occurred tonight in the month of December against Joe Redman and the Generals. Joe Redman. And if we take a look back at the history of the Soul Bowl, you will see some pretty wacky games. But this, with everything that was on the line, has to be the wackiest single greatest ending in the history of this fine game between new, these two fine high school teams. How does Joe Redman console himself? Don't you know? He's asking, why did I put Ronnie Jones in there? He'll second-guess himself for years to come. And at the catch of the ball by Antonio Bryant, the stands on the northwestern side of the field explode. And remember, folks, with inner city pride on the line, this game has an element in some manners bigger than the state championship. Nobody wants to lose this game due to how close they play. They're in the same district. This isn't losing to an indiscriminate 40 kids on the other sideline. They grew up with these kids. They played Pop Warner football together. This is a very emotional game between these two schools, these two communities. Alumni come from all over the state that have gone to Jackson and Northwestern to be here at this game. There is a major discussion that continues to be played out down at the 20-yard line involving our referee John Foster. And now Coach Billy Roll is headed in that direction. Executives 
with the Dade County Public School System are among those involved in the discussion, this officiating team, and you see our own James Bates right in the middle of them. Maybe James can listen in and update us on what this discussion has been about. It would have to involve, do you penalize the Northwestern fans for rushing the field for delay a game? What should transpire now with one second remaining? And Paul, I think it's the obvious is a, there has to be a penalty. Take the fans out of it. Coach Billy Roll ran about 50 yards on the field into the end zone. The players from Northwestern came off the bench. That's an obvious 15-yard personal foul. Soul Bowl dominance. This will be their 12th consecutive victory, 17 of the last 18, won by Northwestern. This was out of the twilight zone, leading 14 to two with two and a half minutes remaining. Two touchdown passes in the final two and a half minutes of play. Let's check in with James. Well, guys, the Zebras are meeting down here, and it's not if they are going to play off this final second. It's when they're going to play off this final second. Obviously, a lot of commotion down here on the field, and the meeting is carried from sideline to sideline, trying to find their own little cranny where they can uh, talk privately. But uh, pretty soon, we're going to get this one second played and see if the Bulls hold on and are actually on their way to Gainesville. They're playing for the state championship. And you see that now Billy Roll has been asked to, to leave that huddle there, too. Just uh, reassured that James survived the, <laughs> the near riot that ensued down there at the center of the field. Let me tell you something. He's been in some hostile environments. I don't know if he's been in one quite like this, where he's on the field and half the stadium rush down onto the floor of the Orange Bowl. But I want to say one thing. Coach Joe Redman, the head coach of Jackson, has handled himself with nothing but class here in these final minutes. Joe Redman and Billy Roll now talking to uh, referee John Foster. And they may elect not to play that final second. We'll let you know when we return. up for dad wins it 15 14 and the bulls will play next weekend for the 6a championship the 12th straight victory over jackson and the referee and mr foster and the dade school system has elected to call a conclusion to the game they won't play the final second here's james guys when you're as good as coach billy roll in the northwestern bulls you don't even sweat do you coach Hey. How about that victory, Coach? Well, obviously, an emotional time for Coach right now. We're trying to get in and, and get a few words from him. Coach, 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 talk about talk about the last few seconds there. Just an incredible victory for your team. Yeah, well, we knew that we were going to go for the safety. We just told our punt, punt team to go after the guy, you know, in case something happened. And fortunately for us, something happened. He fumbled the ball, he fell, he fell on it, had one more play. And, you know, it, that, that victory just came from up the ball. Well, Coach, you're the sixth a coach of the year, but that's an award I'm sure that you'd gladly trade for a state championship ring. Oh yeah, you know, we go back now, I gotta go to practice. Hey coach, we'll catch up with you in the locker room. Congratulations, go enjoy it with your players. Back up to you guys. Well, Billy Roll in the middle of it, and now headed to what will be a raucous full dressing room. 14, the running of the Bulls continues. Our